one of the great joys about having a pond is seeing how it changes throughout the seasons. And in winter, it looks really beautiful. But I want to do more than look. I just want to do something a bit more scientific. So I've got a bottle here. I'm going to take a sample of the water and measure its phosphate level. Along with the pond water, I'm going to test some tap water and water collected from this roof. Okay, so we've now got three samples. This is from the pond. This is from the roof water, water butt. And this is tap water. And I've actually kept them overnight on the windowsill um, so they're all about the same temperature and um, I've measured the temperature and um, it's there 15 15 degrees C now for the little measurement we're going to do it should really be 20 degrees C as a minimum uh, between 25 and 20 but um, it just means the reaction time will be a bit slower so we'll just allow a bit more time um, now phosphate phosphate I should explain is really key to the productivity of a pool. Now you might think the productivity is a fantastic thing, um, but uh, what it means is that um, a lot more life can grow in a pond if it's got lots of phosphate. Phosphate is normally the limiting nutrient to any uh, plant growth and ultimately uh, biomass uh, production in a body of water. Now on the face of it, that might seem a positive thing to have loads of it, but um, the problem with ponds and lakes in nature is that they have become over polluted with unnatural levels of phosphate. This process is called eutrophication, so it means that algae will flourish. What we want to do is return it to the way um, the pools used to be in nature, where they were, had, a, had a really low level of phosphate, and this would then um, uh, moderate the production of algae mainly. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to get it back to what a natural pond should be like, not one that's been polluted by polluted groundwater from agricultural fertilizer. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, um, so measuring phosphate is, is a really interesting thing to do. And it's actually really quite, um, not difficult, but just quite expensive. You need a proper piece of kit. Um, now I have actually, gone out and bought this. This is um, done by Hanna Instruments. I'm just going to put some water. Zero. Just had an error message come up. Um, meter temperature changing too fast. Redo zero to continue. So basically, I've got to do it again. Um, well, it's no surprise as they're trying to do it outside, but for daft idea in the first place. I resume the testing inside, having let the water temperature equalize. This instrument is a photometer and works by measuring the difference in light absorption after a chemical reagent is added. Each measurement takes about 10 minutes to complete. The one we're looking at here is the test being run on the tap water. Okay, I've written the results down on the board here and it actually shows something really interesting. I did the same experiment doing the three samples, but earlier in the year, uh, the 1st of July, about six over six months ago, so it was the height of summer, in fact it was a drought. The results from that in the summer were the tap water was 0.88 uh, milligrams per litre, uh, the ra rain water from the roof was 0.23 and the pool water was zero. Um, I was astonished at the time, I thought it was absolutely, you know, uh, amazing that the water, the uh, phosphate level in the pool was really, really low like this, considering that um, 
it could easily be uh, 0.03 or 0.01. They're, they're about the, the range of acceptability for the phosphate level in a natural swimming pool or an organic pool. Um, so for it to be zero was, 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 was brilliant. Um, what is amazing is that I've just repeated the results, obviously, in the winter. The pool water, again, is zero. Now, I would have expected that to have increased because uh, plants are rotting and the nutrients are being released back into the water. So you would have thought that the phosphate level would have increased in the winter when there's less, um, less well, certainly hardly any growing of any hive plants. So um, I, I think that's astonishing. So, you know, I didn't, obviously, I didn't quite believe it. And I, uh, I, I did that test three times and it kept on coming back to zero. Anyway, there we go. Um, tap water, it just went through the roof, 2.50 uh, milligrams per litre, um, which is, um, which, which is actually quite astonishing. Uh, the, the, the water level in the UK is, you know, uh, the, the highest should be around 1.5, um, milligrams per litre of tap water. Um, oh, that's, that's the sort of upper range. So, um. Maybe because we've been having lots of flooding, um, uh, the tap water's come out and come out uh, as very high in phosphate. I don't know. Um, the other interesting thing is that the um, the rainwater off the roof is is also uh, is, is zero along with the pool water. Now, I would have thought that there would have been some nutrients in the you know debris washed off the roof um, because obviously rain itself is almost distilled water except for a few absorbed um, gases on its way down like oxygen carbon dioxide um, but pretty much other than that pure um, but when it comes in contact with a roof it obviously washes any debris and bird poo for instance or pollen or dust um, that's the main source of any uh, any potential phosphate um, but here it's zero zero and that's because probably so much water has been flowing uh, that the roof's really clean uh, in the summer, and this was during a drought. That same water was uh, 0.23 milligrams per litre. So um, that figures with low rainfall. Then this has actually had added um, quite a few, uh, uh, quite a few nutrients, but um, uh, still uh, like a quarter of what the tap water in the summer was doing, and a, and a tenth of what the tap water is doing now. So. Um, it sort of corroborates what I've been saying for ages, uh, is that, um, well, previously I've had no proof, uh, that the best water to go for, well, certainly in the UK, is, uh, is rainwater. Rainwater falling directly in the pond, that's it. That's, that's the perfect stuff. Uh, but a second best is the rainwater from the roof, and you can collect more of that and divert it in the pond. So that's a, 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 practical, a practical way to fill the pool and a really low... Um, level of phosphate will be introduced well for any fill water it actually should be um the fill water uh should be uh 0.01 like really low if you were sticking to the technical guidelines um which which corresponds to what the uh the uh, the first phosphate level in the pool water should be which should be 0.1 well obviously it can be less than that which thankfully this is um, but um, th th I'm still quite astonished by this. Um, um, anyway, hopefully that has explained a bit about phosphates, and um, uh, I, and I, I just find this result, you know, astonishing. Um, whether an individual should, um, whether I think it's a good investment for for everybody to pay four hundred and seventy pounds for um, a phosphate meter, I I, I don't think so. Um, Especially when the results just come back as zero, 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 zero. Um, value for money, not great, but it's actually been uh, really quite um, interesting and reassuring for me. So um, thanks for watching.